for his works on OTT apps such as Geo Cinema. He is a dedicated full-time video creator and serves as a co-creator at GoStop. Weird, please bear with me. Uh, is my screen visible? Are the slides visible? Yes, yes, they are visible. Okay. A hobby. So I started my college. I used to put photographs on my Instagram page. Uh, but then slowly and steadily, what happened was I did. Uh, I started hating engineering. I don't know why. This, I was feeling that why am I here? That I do not fit in the engineering uh, students uh, type of thing. So, but still, I was continuing. I once told my parents that. I should like uh, quit uh, engineering and do something else. But they just said that, what do you want to do? Uh, explain to us and show us some proof or something like, what can you do about it? I was not confident at that time. I didn't actually know what I had to do. So going on forward, <laughs> I just kept on getting more backlogs and backlogs more than I could handle. So it was like, uh, I don't know what to do. but. But on the other hand, what happened in 2019 was uh, I was doing photography, basically like street and travel photography on my Instagram page and the company started approaching me. There was like a brand who said that we'll use your photos for our uh, hostel. And then came the ghost ops co-creator. The co-creator thing was like, uh, you can say they selected around 15 people from all over India. And they said that we are opening a backpacker hostel in Mumbai. We need people who can create content, who can design their hostel. Uh, and uh, this, it was about that they will provide free stay and travel in and around Mumbai. So I took there, I met many people. They were like photographers, they were artists, graphic designers, mural artists. So that really opened my mind that there is. Uh, so once I applied for a graphic design job, so once I applied for a graphic design job, it was a like a event company. But I met there with other applicants and one of the applicants asked me to shoot videos for her channel. So I said, why not? And then she asked me to edit it, but I did not know editing. So I said, why not learn editing? And then in like late 2019, I started my own YouTube channel. I did uh, videos around me just roaming around in places. So I started learning editing by that time, color grading, uh, slow, doing slow mo videos, and all that stuff. Uh, what, so what, whatever it is, uh, whatever was trending at that time, I would say. So in 2019 and 2020, I did a YouTube channel, and then whatever during that time, whatever opportunity I got, like I was posting photographs on Instagram, uh, the uh, photography community in Chandigarh was uh, they, they recognized me that he is a good photographer he takes good photos there were models and designers approaching me that we can do collab shoots collabs are basically free shoots I said why not and whatever opportunity whether free or paid I would take it it was all about uh, learning things at that time basically I'd say then in 2021 what happened it was my last semester in the college so basically as uh, I had very bad academics, uh, so I what I did was I just got a certificate from an XYZ uh, training institute, whatever that six month training thing is there. And instead, uh, in my local city, Rajpura, uh, someone offered me a job like a visa filing executive over there, like the immigration company where we do student visas and stuff. So there I was, uh, I started as a visa filing executive. And then within a month and a half, I was like, uh, you know, that I have done a little bit of video editing. I do posters also. Why not I shift towards that, that you need uh, to grow your social media and I can help you in that. So I was there, uh, so totally shifted from a visa filing towards video editing and graphic designing and handling their Facebook and Instagram uh, and the social media, YouTube and all. So around five months I was there, then uh, in the sixth month around June or July, like I had exams to give, so I left there. So after that, uh, once I gave my exams, so I was like free. I had no job, I had nothing, but a little bit of experience in video editing and graphic design. 
so i started looking for jobs on internshala and many other places but uh, uh, applying online did not work and most of the jobs that i were remote i didn't have an efficient uh, working system for me nor i was i'd say that that an expert in editing i'd get a decent job but somehow in around uh, two months later uh, in november i got a job at a production house in chandigarh that uh, which uh, you refer as shoot for brands actually it was not a, a name at that time it was just a freelancer working so after that we actually became a production house total after my entry so my boss was actually an experienced tv professional he had done interviews he had done short films he had done tv serials and many other things so he was like really expert in his field and i i like i thought that i had got a great mentor at that time so whatever we did was like not only i did their video editing we started with his personal vlogs we used to do ad films we used to do social media instagram reels and then and not only i was involved in the editing he used to give me a camera and say like if we are doing a corporate event that you be the second camera over there and shoot whatever you can so this way two things happened not only uh, my editing improved but i also knew what shots to uh, to uh, uh, complement the edit you know like uh, those things and assistant direction we used to write scripts uh, we used to uh, decide locations uh, about uh, ad films and all and me basically it was like a all rounded kind of role i also did a little bit social media over there so this way and we had like a i joined in around november 2021 and by 20 end of 2022 we had uh, we in november there uh, and then after that uh, this year in july i quit that job and i am doing my own freelance work so this was my journey till now i'd say and then basically what i realize right now actually i i was looking back at my journey is that whatever i did along the way that like uh, i applied for this uh, this uh, job at the production house they asked was that proficiency in final cut pro and before applying i didn't even know that final cut pro is a software all i knew was little about premiere pro so just figuring out my way and i have been doing my work from like last Three years and uh, a little freelance here and there, and now I, in during full time freelance, I'm working with around five six clients a month, and two of them are retainer clients and other are short form clients. So this was about my journey. And what next? Uh, I'll talk about some career paths. So if you are looking, basically, uh, the prerequisites of video editing is. for what i think is none there are just tools and softwares you should learn uh, and now there are like many and many softwares be it premiere pro be it final cut be it davinci resolve there is filmora and then there is now capcut like every day there are new and new things rising towards it so learning whatever tool you can learn and be good at it be an expert at it that will help you and then there are uh, weddings corporate music videos ad films content creation these type of things so basically th- uh, these all require a sense in editing that if you are a wedding editor there is a different type of sense involved the uh, how to put the shots uh, how to do slow mo and things and when we when you do in corporate events and edits that's a different type of it though so that sense you have to acquire that comes by just practice uh, there is no such course or something that will teach you courses can teach you about the tools what to use and what not but that sense you need uh, that where do i place a j cut where do i place an l cut where do i need such a transition where do i need such things that comes with your own practice that's what i think nobody can teach you that's uh, all your work can teach you so this this is all <laughs> I think I ended very early. <laughs> so basically, what else I can talk about is if you want to talk about tools and softwares, I can talk about it. So Rahul, uh, please guide me a little about this. 
what the gist of so the that, session you want to be about. So we have a question and answer uh, session at the end of the uh, end of our session. So okay. if you have any extra uh, extra slides, you can continue. Extra slides, all I have is like uh, whatever you want to do, create a proof of work. That's what uh, I'd say. Like uh, when I was starting, uh, I started as a photographer. So I was doing uh, traveling around and clicking pictures of places uh, from some random villages in Chandigarh to traveling to places like Mumbai, Manali and all. So that what happened was that company started approaching me like uh, the, your photo of Manali is this is very good. So that we should we would like to put it on our page. So that's what proof of work does that if you are good at something, people will come to you. Same thing happened in my freelance journey. <laughs> if I talk honestly, I have uh, within my six months, I have never approached a client myself saying that I'm a video editor, I can do this. All this work comes to me from my personal references, whatever I have done earlier. So that's what proof of work helps. Like if I spent a year and a half doing videos of celebrities and uh, brands like Yvonne and other stuff, that helps me get work today because that is a something like a good work. So this is what is more important. Like someone, if we, someone of you were to apply to me, you you could just say that I am a video editor and I need a job. Do you have a job? Or what you could do is take this, uh, suppose take this session, create a couple of shots uh, from this session and say, I made this shot and uh, uh, are you impressed by it? So you can keep me on your job or something like that. This is all what I would add. Then questions are there like uh, these days people ask much things like does AI need to be feared of? And uh, I just say no, that AI isn't much of a thing because AI at this stage cannot decide that if I am cutting between two shots, why did I add a cross dissolve and not a jump cut? And if I am doing a wedding, why did I uh, slow down the footage even if it isn't shot on a higher frame rate kind of thing? So many people like this, this thing that AI is going to take over everything. So why should I learn video editing? AI will not take over everything. AI will just provide you just I was watching you yesterday session. So you need to talk about something called MVP, uh, minimum viable product. AI will give you a minimum viable product, but it won't uh, give you a totally finished product. Uh, you say like that creative, that human feeling, that emotional intelligence thing, AI won't add up to it. So you don't need to fear of AI. It's just a tool that will simplify your job. This uh, is all I want to say about it. <laughs> it so ended I'm, really fast. I, I have a question it. for it. Right, right, right. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So since you are a video editor right. and many of uh, the students who are pursuing their engineering now, Consider the case that they don't have money to buy the original video uh, editing software product. Right. I can, I can download crack from somewhere. Right. But uh, we don't have access like the crack file always crashes. Where that is for free and which has a uh, quite a uh, quite a many usable tools. I'd say DaVinci Resolve, the free version of DaVinci is always pretty good. Unless you're not doing uh, professional videos like higher quality videos, 4K, 10 bit videos that are like uh, really quality work, which I think beginners never do. DaVinci is always a pretty great tool. And then there are free tools like HitFilm Express is a, another video editor. Avid Media Composer uh, has a free version. Avid is the tool where they edit movies and stuff. And then there's Lightworks. There are many, many options to explore. Even if you can't buy a product or can't uh, manage to crack a product. So see, simple thing is that nothing is there to stop you from anything. Like, you know, if you want to see, if you want to learn Premiere, you will somehow crack it and learn Premiere also. But if you don't want to learn on some other tool, you can learn on some other tool also. Tools are just, see, tools, the uh, word tools itself is meaning like that, that tools are just tools. It's about how you use that tool, how you create skills from that and uh, pursue your career. It's the main thing. There are phone tools like InShot, VN Editor. These are totally free tools. I have seen many people earning a good money just from using these free tools on the phone. 
so there's nothing stopping you like tools are never going to stop you from creating something else like that. i hope i answered right so can you suggest some websites to download a uh, video editing assets and sfx assets and as sfx give uh, be the heart for the video editing if we have a cut and we, if we don't have the sfx for it it doesn't look lively right yeah so right right where can we get those vfx and sfx assets see i use basically for sfx i have been using pixabay i'll suggest you free sites I, otherwise there are sites like envato shutterstock or story browser those are paid sites basically for pixabay is like you can get their music stock images vectors sound effects everything almost there for assets uh, there is this site uh, motionary has a, a, a very nice assets uh, in the free uh, thing of that and then there is mix kit they they offer very nice presets there is cinepex just you it's nothing like you just google free assets for video editing there are hundreds and hundreds of sites i can't even name them you will get whatever assets you like uh, even youtube studio has a, a sound effects youtube studio has music uh, the audio library of youtube studio that is pretty vast and rich for you to begin with i'd say so that's a those are just like well, you just one google search away from these things now these days uh, if you uh, if you do uh, you watching instagram and there are many many creators offering their free asset packs be it uh, green screen assets or light leaks or sound effects or animated icons or whatever stuff you see thank you let me uh, search some questions yeah there are some questions that people asked let me go through it sanjay is asking uh, uh, he is asking that you have been working through many softwares and which is your favorite see i have been working through i started with the uh, premiere pro honestly a cracked version of premiere pro so then i during my job i shifted to davinci resolve and as well as final cut pro davinci we did for like uh, color grading and stuff and uh, see softwares are like uh, when i was a year and a half i spent on final cut then final cut pro was like a very good uh, option but final cut pro that premiere pro doesn't have premiere pro and then davinci is always good for uh, color grading and stuff but still when i have to do the motion graphics and stuff i find uh, davinci resolve a little exhausting because maybe you call it something like uh, i've been using premiere and final cut for a long time that's why i'm not so used to davinci resolve but right now i'm working on premiere pro and uh, i think it's uh, one of the best in here over here i have also used filmora a uh, couple of times filmora is also good for light editing and they have uh, pre made templates and assets you can use uh, but premiere is what suits me the best uh, these days right so Raul, you are on mute. Sorry for that. Uh, Vivek is asking a question. Video editing requires both technical skills and a clear creative flair. How do you strike right. a balance between the technical aspects of editing and expressing your creative vision? See, technical aspects of editing are just uh, you follow a YouTube playlist and you are done with it. it's as simple as that it, it just requires practice like you know that uh, i have to do cuts here i have to put this effect i have to adjust uh, adjust something like, like colors and adjustment there that's all you can learn watching a playlist basically uh, tools the proficiency in tools is just practice you know and then there is a clear creative thing is like uh, this is both practice and what uh, basically your uh, mental i'd say like what's your state on doing such things like uh, i have been uh, during my job i have been stressed a lot of times and uh, i have been burnt out and there was not a good creative output of that thing you know 
so like uh, it's basically that you you have a good mindset you watch go, good things like you know the you watch movies you watch other people's work what are they doing and what not and like basically it's like thinking that uh, what will evoke a better emotion in a thing like if you are suppose you're editing a wedding like if the bride is crying so you have to experiment over there that if i uh, do this shot at suppose a 50% speed i s- slow down the shot what will be the effect if i do it the normal speed what will be the effect it's it's just like you have to practice that thing you have to experiment on that things that will get you more creative and then you get inspired from others work you also copy sometimes uh, some others work try to put up your own taste on it that what if uh, this person does something like this and i add this effect to it what will be the output i have done these things uh, a lot many times with color grades and stuff so that's how it's basically being experimentative o- over it like you have to experiment over things like even if my job was a 9 hour shift i had spent uh, 10 11 12 hours doing things like uh, if uh, there's an ad film i'm editing what if i tweak the script uh, to put some shots before and the earlier shots after what will this change in the story so that's basically what i've learned by is practicing and experimenting things you get a creative vision yeah let us have a question from youtube does video editing will leave, lead me on my way to become a vfx and a cj artist Yes, sure. Basically, even if you go to learn VFX and CGI in any of the institutes, they start with video editing. Basically, you it's like a first step to anything you want to go. If you even if you want to go towards direction, filmmaking and stuff, video editing is something you should know. So it definitely will help in VFX because you see that uh, I, I know people who do VFX. You have to understand things that uh, here is this type of shot. So we have to cut it towards a close up. We have to cut it to a wide shot. So we need such type of VFX to be done on that. Then you need to understand lighting and stuff. Even basically VFX is like you need even uh, cinematography skills in that. Uh, To say like uh, where the lights pass through, how is the object looking? How is the, suppose you created a 3D creature. How is the 3D creature uh, uh, reacting to the light in the scene, these are the things you need. So video editing will lead you towards VFX, but uh, you have to learn uh, VFX in depth. Video edit- editing is just a first step towards VFX. Okay, so uh, did you work on Blender? No, I don't work on 3D things. I actually, I didn't have enough time to explore the uh, 3D region because I was till July, I was uh, in a job and during job time, you literally don't have enough time to do things. Now that I am uh, doing freelance, I am slowly and steadily learning things like uh, I was I wasn't even good at After Effects, doing motion graphics kind of stuff. No, so I'm into it these days. So maybe in a month, uh, I'll reach Blender or these days, Unreal Engine is the going trend. So any of these 3D softwares. But right now I haven't done anything. Yeah, there is another question. Receiving feedback is a crucial part of video editing process. How do you handle and incorporate feedback from clients or other collaborators? See, feedback is sometimes it goes a very funny thing about feedback. It's really ambiguous. Like someone just says that maza nahi aaya. So what I actually do whenever I present uh, a final edit to a client like uh, what i basically do these days are just uh, daily shots uh, kind of things so there's not much feedback involved basically i have access to their channels and i what uh, what i see is their retention graphs like uh, if a video is doing 60 percent retention 70 percent retention where is the retention falling that is uh, for the youtube case of things like uh, uh, what when i used to do ad films and stuff what I did was uh, I used to create uh, two, at least two or sometimes even three versions of the final edit where with a little change in music and uh, with a little change in cuts so that when a person sees one, he says that something has something is missing. Here. I show them the other two. Like, uh, do you find something more interesting here that that isn't in the first one? 
so basically it was like uh, getting particulars from a client you know like uh, what do you want here so that's what helped me that creating two three versions of the same edit that would help me basically what feedback comes across is basically the color grade it's about the color grade that we want little bright colors little saturated or little desaturated look or there's about the music or there's about some shot uh, which doesn't present the brand uh, in a particular way these are the things basically they ask to improve upon so that's why we i i generally prefer that there are at least two or three versions of the final edit which help them which help them figure out that uh, what happens if there is this thing and this is not there so i hope i answer that question yeah we have another question from sanjay why do you think everyone is shifting from premiere pro to davinci resolve see there are two things to that davinci has improved significantly over the years so and it is a much cost effective solution than premiere pro premiere is like around 15 1600 uh, rupees a month if i am using premiere pro today and it's just like i don't need only premiere pro i need after effects i need photoshop with it so it's it's much more expensive solution than davinci resolve davinci resolve is a one time payment thing you know and uh, and it has a very huge amount of features in the free version itself so even you can start with free version and if you need the that paid thing you can pay it later right so that's why davinci and then there is another thing like once uh, it has been a trend on youtube if you say over the past 6 months like uh, if a big creator is using davinci resolve everyone else is just uh, hopping on to the trend to you know get more views also like many creators are just putting davinci resolve videos that this is a trending topic these days so we should uh, create but uh, that that's all because how do you understand it like if i am doing premiere from around 3 years i find it uh, tough to do some things in davinci resolve the fusion page and doing motion graphics and stuff so whatever feels uh, better to you you can use it basically davinci is this time uh, it's uh, just because uh, it is a cost effective solution for video editing than premiere that's why many are using it hello yeah there uh, sorry for the de delay i just lost my connection okay what are your pc specifications and what do you think is the basic requirement can you please repeat the voice cut down okay what are your pc specifications uh, what do you think is the basic requirement for video editing so my pc specifications is i'm using a laptop which has i9 11 gen processor with an rtx 3060 Uh, 6G, 6 gb of uh, rt 3060 and 16 gb ram so basically i uh, when earlier i was i started into video editing i had an i5 7 gen with an 2 gb graphics processor uh, and 8 gb ram that did uh, pretty well in hd videos but for 4k videos i had to use and every editing tool has this option of using proxies so if you are into using proxies and stuff uh, these days uh, like i5 processors are good for that with a 2 2 gb ram or 4 gb ram uh, 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 etc ram of graphic cards and uh, at least uh, there should be minimum 8 gigabytes of ram to function smoothly but uh, i recommend at least to be 16 gigabytes of ram if you are 
if you have to use like uh, i have to use sometimes premiere pro and after effects together so higher m benefits with that okay we have another question from harish what steps do you take to catch and correct errors before finalizing a project other than keeping multiple files error handling is like uh, i just watch it uh, twice or thrice or ask someone else to watch it like during uh, when i used to do ad films and stuff i used to create a final edit and then sometimes my boss used to watch over it and say that here is something you missed here is a glitch here is something so that's uh, what uh, help because if what happens is you spent uh, four or five hours on something uh, there is something called eye fatigue you are not able to catch error search because you are too much involved in those things so before finalizing a project i'd say that try to have someone look over it and uh, you yourself can watch two or three times to see whatever there is a mistake or something and uh, do backups for each version of something you change backups do surely help like uh, if i'm doing a project i'll create at least like i create copies like one side do the cut then there is a copy of a project then one side do the sound design then there is a copy of a project then one side do the color grading then there is a copy of the project so these things help i'd say in the yeah another question from harish was how do you handle different video formats video formats uh, as such like uh, there are basically the simple video formats are like light videos then there are uh, the log footage you say they have formats like h264 h265 so basically though my editing machine takes up all kinds of formats that's not a big issue but sometimes you will have to convert it using tools like media encoder or then there's a handbrake is a tool to convert video codecs to whatever codec you want to like so that you can efficiently work in a, a particular video format basically you have everything like if i'm working suppose there's a format called s265 or hevc video uh, iphones and uh, iphone shoot uh, basically hevc so this that is something sometimes a problem in windows systems so i had to convert that s265 footage to s264 or apple pro res 422 codec to work smoothly and efficiently in the editing system we have another question from youtube uh, kashik is asking what was your worst experience uh, the audio cut off please. can you please repeat what was your worst experience while working on a project worst experience i don't uh, see anything as a worst experience but basically there are people who are uh, like uh, too much uh, i'd say they poke too much nose in every detail of the video though it isn't uh, like uh, suppose uh, i uh, too many revisions i'd say like uh, I, uh, i didn't like the music of this and then i put another music then they'd say like pichle wala zyada badhiya tha you know the earlier music was fine then they like uh, why why am uh, why am i looking fat here why why i'm not looking slim here like these questions you know like i can't uh, you you can't do much to someone who's you know like i won't say like who's fat you know uh, so these are type of things sometimes you know i will not call it worse experience but these are irritating sometimes you know like uh, what uh, this is the color and uh, uh, like sometimes people have a choice for uh, ugly colors you know they say that why didn't uh, you put uh, flashy orange here but uh, the aesthetic of the video doesn't match those colors uh, so these are kind of things that are a little irritating but i have not a uh, worse i won't say a worse experience so far everything went good uh, i am usually very you know in a funny way uh, we do things we are not very serious about that that if someone has changes those changes and no through talking and a little humor we do say that this is a little irritating change but uh, not a, not any worse experience so far another question from krishna how was your experience working in tasty boys tasty it was a great experience like uh, 
uh, when i uh, i recently joined uh, the production house uh, i was working in 2021 it was under that only uh, tasty boys was there and uh, <laughs> i was just new to editing such kind of videos because earlier what i had done was just like a little social media post for an immigration consultancy you know like uh that there was nothing much of creativity involved over there that was just plain cuts and uh, putting a little uh, packaging over a thing so doing tasty boys it was like uh, my first i'd say big project it was a learning experience mo more of thing that how do you cut a roll how do you place b roll where do you need slow motion where do you need time lapses uh, how to transition from one shot to another and how to uh, color correct the footage how to color grade it these type of things uh, i'd say uh, i learned from tasty boys and then we basically started it uh, for youtube and uh, to to be uh, just streamed on youtube but then somehow it ended up on airtel tv hangama play and now jio cinema it was overall a learning experience kind of my first big project i'd say okay uh, let me give a final call for the ones who are uh, who are interested to ask any questions anybody who are interested to ask questions can raise a hand and you can go on Final call. If anybody are interested to ask any questions, you can ask. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for having for attending this session and giving you a valuable time here. Thank you. Anything else you want to like or something? Yeah, no. Just okay, I have a, a maybe a silly basic question. How do you deal with uh, crashing, app crash? Because uh, I myself as a video editor try to edit videos and then suddenly app collapses. I now like uh, the things I'm working on right now aren't too much uh, heavy. Uh, I'd say like there there is no heavy footage involved. Uh, there are not much. Heavy effects, and so I deal with the crashes a lot less these days. But when I was doing heavy things, there were a lot of crashes. All I could do was pray to God that it doesn't crash at a crucial point, you know. And then uh, auto save thing is these days like I have set my auto save to sixty seconds every minute. It auto saves everything. So these are things I try to prevent losses during any crash. But these things are inevitable. Softwares are improving on it, like. From Premiere Pro, I've seen 2018, 2018 to 2024. Now crashes are a lot lesser than earlier. Thank you, Harshimran. Thank you. I hope everyone had a great time. a final call if anybody wants to ask any questions you can ask uh hasimran excuse me yeah right right yeah uh, can everybody please turn on the video we'll uh, just take a quick snapshot on of it Thank you so much Asimran for joining us. Hope to see you again.
थैंक यू थैंक यू संजय भैया स्टॉप द लाइफ